Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Hey, today's going to be kind of a fun day. What we're going to do is we're going to get some design stuff and some reverse engineering, okay? So we have this audio pipe we've looked at for the last couple of days. We're going to reverse engineer this, kind of analyze how and why they use the components they did, all right? And we're going to, it's a two-way crossover, so it's got a tweeter and a woofer. If you've seen the last couple of videos, if not, I've got the links below. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my board, my whiteboard. And we're going to kind of, I'm going to try to walk you through this stuff, okay? Uh, I know this a little bit complex if you're not familiar with this stuff. And, uh, you know, if you've seen it before and you're trying to relearn it, hey, we want to use a KISS method. Keep it simple, right? So it's a two-way crossover. What I'm showing here is a schematic sample of just a woofer. The tweeter I'm going to show you in a moment. Tweeter would also, so this is the input connector. The tweeter would come off here and go through a tweeter circuit. But I, I wanted to kind of walk you through this and then it'll make the tweeter a little bit easier. So what we have is an inductor feeding uh, our woofer. And I'm using the uh, letter R, a resistor. It's not technically a resistor, it's a speaker, but you know, let's say we have a speaker that's rated at 4 ohms. Well, across the frequency band of interest, we're going to just say it's 4 ohm to make the speaker more ideal. Okay? You know, because it's kind of hard to design a crossover. There are There is software, actually, where you put load in the driver, and then you it helps you create this. I'm going to show you that in another video. But for now, I want to just go over some theory and how to design on your own notebook paper, okay? So we're gonna just say, cause you come pretty darn close, say this is four ohms and we wanna decide what size of inductor to put there. And you know, like what is this stuff doing? Well, it's gonna allow the low frequencies go this way, the high frequencies it's not going to allow, so they'll have to go this way into the tweeter. So that's the idea of the crossover, it crosses over. Low frequencies will go, whoops, I'm going this way. High frequencies say, whoops, I'm going this way. Okay? And on this graph, what I'm showing is voltage versus frequency. And the low frequencies is this black curve. We're going to say, ideally, this section right here, I'm going to say 4K is, would be our cutoff. Okay? At 4K, we'd want all those frequencies going to uh, the, the woofer from 0 to 4K. 4K and above, we'd want them to cut down here and go to the tweeter. So that'd be the crossover point. Or I've given a couple other names here. It's known by the break frequency or cutoff frequency or the 3 dB point. Because what happens in the voltage is if you take if you're using log math, then you know you take the logarithmic uh, equation and you end up with 3 dBs at this point where your crossover and that's because at that point they say this is half power okay what it is is it's 0.707 volts here it's one over the uh, square root of two okay square root of two is 1.4 one over that's about 0.707 okay so if you put one volt here and you saw 0.7 here you'd go okay I'm at my 3 dB point I'm rolling off and then if you put higher and higher frequencies here, it, you'd be down here somewhere. And lower and lower in the decibels, okay? And so your woofer wouldn't play those frequencies. It, it'd be very little amplitude going to the woofer, so it would hardly move. You know, and the further higher frequency you went, the smaller the voltage would be, okay? Ideally, it'd come out to, to 4K and just drop straight off, and the purple line for the tweeter would come straight up and straight over. So this would be the tweeter, the purple, what it would play. It would play the full one volt here, and the full one volt black would go to the woofer, ideally. But they're going to roll off, okay? And as they roll off, sometimes they call it a pull. Because when you hit a pull in a filter, you roll off at 20 dBs per decade. It's the same thing as... 6 dBs per octave. A decade is 10 times the frequency. So if you're 1K where you're rolled off, a decade away, you'd be 10K. You know, an octave is two times, so it'd be 2K. If you roll off at 1K, an octave would be 2K. 
And so a lot of times people use octaves instead of decades because in some filters, you're going to roll off many decades and you're going to have the same slope. It's kind of like if you're driving across state or across the country, you're going to be driving for long distance and you can get your gas mileage or your speed very easily, your average speed. But if you're going 100 yards, then you kind of got to come up with a different unit of your speed. You're not going to say, I ran 100 miles an hour if you're running a 100 yard dash. You know, you see what I'm saying? So then you're going to come up with another unit. So they use octaves because every time you double the frequency, that's a smaller stretch along the curve. So that's why octaves are used a lot. So a first order is 6 dBs per octave or 20 dBs per decade. Second order is just double that. Third order, triple that. So third order is you know, 18 dBs per octave or 60 dBs per decade, okay? So if you roll off 4K, 40K would be out here somewhere. See, that's beyond where we even care. And so, but it'd be 20 dBs from here. If it, was, if it was zero dBs here, you'd be down minus 20 dBs down over here somewhere. But you might have something else in your filter that actually at some frequencies, you even, you push it down more. So if you want to get this more ideal where it goes straight down, you add more uh, degrees, which means for every degree of your filter, essentially you have an X, okay? So this filter only has one X, so it's a single order or single degree. I, call, I keep on saying degrees. I kind of, sorry, go interchangeable back and forth, but a single order filter, you'll see one X, okay? If I had a C in here, it'd be a second order filter, okay? But since there's only one X, so the X is the reactance. R is for resistance, but we also X's. Inductors and capacitors also impede current flow, and they call them X's it's for reactants, and they react differently to frequencies. Resistors ideally don't. So they're, if it's 4 ohm resistor, it's 4 ohms all the time. Again, this is a speaker, but we're going to call it a 4 ohm resistor. So when this guy, when, when uh, low frequencies, uh, there's not a lot of reactants in an inductor. They call them chokes too, right? Uh, an inductor, when current changes fast through it, it creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field creates an opposite current flow that pushes against the current that's trying to go through it. So that's why they call them chokes. So they don't like to have cha uh, fast changing currents through them, okay? Inductors don't like that. That's what they're used for, is to kind of reduce the current flow, okay? During fast transitions. So on a DC circuit, when you throw that switch down, if you have a, you know, if you had a surge current or something, you put an inductor in there to kind of limit that surge current. On a crossover, the low frequencies, what they're going to do at low frequencies, the inductor doesn't have that same reactance. It, as the magnetic field builds, pretty soon it stabilizes and lets the current go. Okay, but then all of a sudden it changes flow, direction again, and then it has to do that process again. Well, if it does it real fast, high frequency, it it's more impedance. If it's low frequency, it's very low impedance. So, at say zero hertz that's really dc current right if it's one hertz it's very slow moving current and this guy's going to essentially look like a short um so the voltage if you put one volt in you're going to pretty much get one volt until the 3 db point and that's where this thing starts to curve and drop off and wh where that is is when you have 0 0.7 volts here so if you're monitoring this with the scope and you're seeing your frequency at one volt, and it starts to drop down at 0.7, you go, there's my crossover point. That's my 3 dB point, okay? And that is one over the square root of two, or 0.707. So, you know, if you go 20 times the log of 0.707, so I drew that right down here, 20 times the log of 0.707 is 3 dB. If you go 20 times the log of one volt, it's zero dBs. So you start off, you know, that's why I'm kind of using one volt because that's your zero reference. And then three dB points down is your roll off. 
and that's where you want the tweeter to come up to start taking over at that same point so that's where we want our crossover that's what we call our crossover two-way crossover okay so reactance like i said is x so x of l x of c would be capacitor x of l is 2 times pi times f times l so if we want to find what if we're re reverse engineering this and we know what inductor we have there then we can solve for f so we go okay so this so because of this we can find f and all we have to do is divide both sides by 2 pi l so we take x of l and divide it by 2 pi l and we get frequency so next Next, uh, I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to show you the inductor, and we're going to calculate that here, okay? And I'm going to show you what frequency that happens. So that frequency, that means that basically this is a voltage divider. So it's kind of Kirchhoff's voltage law. Whatever voltage you put into a circuit, the drops around that circuit equal the voltage you put into it. So at first we want all the voltage here. But eventually, as the frequencies go up, it starts to shift over here. We start getting more and more voltage drop here. At some point, we have 0.7 volts here, 0.3 volts here. That's the cutoff. That's right here. We go higher or higher in frequency. We'll get more and more volts here. Eventually, we'll have one volt here, zero volts here. That's the ideal thing. Okay. And you know, during this time, we'll have the frequencies going to the uh, tweeter. So that's how that works. Let me show you the value of this inductor and let's calculate that, okay? Hey guys, so I did a little math and I redrew a few things. I wanna, I hope you can see that, but let's go over this. Okay, the inductor I measured is 251.4 microhenries. The uh, X of L, the impedance of that inductor is two times pi times F times L. So the three black dots are therefore F is equal to, so if you solve for F, divide both sides by 2 pi L, you get X of L over 2 pi L is equal to F. And so when we say X of L is equal to 4 ohms, so here's what I want to kind of show you now, okay? Now we're doing power, so power we're going to use 10 times the log of whatever number we're looking at versus 20 times the log. Okay. And because, you know, that's the way power is done with 10 times the log. So when we get half the voltage here and half the voltage here, we'll have our crossover point. Okay. So what we do is we say, okay, if this is a 4 ohm woofer, when the inductor is equal to 4 ohms, we've reached our 3 dB point. Okay, so um, 20 times the log of 0.7 is 3 dB, but 10 times the log of 0.5 is also 3 dB. Kind of interesting. You go ahead and punch in your calculator and you see how that works out. Now, when we go 6 dB per octave, let's say that, okay, here, let's back up for a moment. Okay, let's go over here. I want to show you something. X of L, when we say X of L is equal to R, 2 pi FL is equal to R. You know the 2 pi fl here and then we solve for f and so it's r over 2 pi l so x l over 2 pi l so if we mix x l equal to r you know which is a 4 ohms then we solve for that we go 4 divided by 2 times pi times 251.4 we get 2.5 k so down here we get our 3 db at 2.5 k and that's what we saw in that video in the last couple videos right and then if you go one octave that's two times that that's 5k then it should be down 60 B's okay so just kind of go over that now okay so that's the woofer that's a single pole or so it's a single order filter just one thing now that's the woofer now the tweeter what we do is they did something a little different on this board. We're going to go over that. But if you're going to just make this a really simple, uh, you know, two-way crossover, all you do is replace that with the capacitor, okay? And let's go over that. All right, guys. So I did a little more math, and I drew my picture. So here's the uh, input.
okay and we're coming through the input plus to uh, minus for our base okay our woofer sorry I put base there I should put woofer and our tweeters in purple and it just comes down it has a capacitor and a resistor instead so now since we know what the crossover frequency is supposed to be our purple is supposed to come in here and our green is supposed to come over here so since we know that we know that x of c is equal to 1 over 2 pi times f times c. So we want to find out what c should be. So we know that uh, if we cross multiply, multiply c up here, x of c down here, it, it, c is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times f times x of c. So we put the values in. We got 2 times pi times F is 2.5 kilohertz, and X of C is, we're going to say, equal to 4 ohms, equal to 4 ohms over here. We're going to say our tweeter is the same as our woofer for our base. Uh, they're both 4 ohms, so we put 4 ohms in, and it, the math shows 15.9 microfarads. So 15.9 microfarad cap here would give us a first order uh, filter for our, our a woofer and a first order filter for a tweeter. So that's a really simple two way crossover. Now, this guy, I've opened it up. This guy's a little bit more complex in that it handles the tweeter just with a little more complexity, okay? Now, since this video is kind of getting long, I'm going to uh, delve into showing you the close-up of this into the next video okay part two of this video we'll cover how they actually do it and i'll show you the zoomed in picture of this guy and uh the schematic in that okay sorry uh, i think i just want to keep the video from going too long so we'll just make that a, a part two of this one but for a really simple easy two-way crossover uh first order filter that's the way you can do it. You can change the frequency, use the equations for this. Okay, so I'm going to show you another equation you can use just to uh, use for your calculations. Now we reverse engineered and found this one and then found this value. Well, so the equations I've shown you already, x of c equals this. If you know what crossword frequency is, you just solve like I did on both equations. Solve for f, put that frequency in and you can solve for your capacitance and you just make your x of c or your x of l equal to whatever resistance is on your uh, speaker driver okay so if it's a 5 ohm you just change the x of c to 5 ohms all right guys so uh also making the videos a little shorter hopefully make it a little bit easier to digest uh let me know what you think of this okay uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey, I appreciate Patreons too. Uh, it really helps me with this stuff. So thanks, guys. And the thumbs up helps a lot too if you like the video. And subscribe if you haven't done so. All right. Hey, I'm going to uh, punch out part two of this real quick. All right. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.